So ByteDance just dropped a model that sketches like a human, big shapes first, tiny details later, while running nearly twice as fast. Alibaba broke the language barrier wide open with new open source tools that crush benchmarks across the board. And over in the United States, researchers just taught chatbots to finally shut up when they don't have an answer instead of lying and inventing stuff. It's fast, it's powerful, and it's getting way too real. Let's get into it. Let's roll with ByteDance first. Their researchers just unveiled something called Detail Flow, and it flips the usual draw a picture routine on its head. Traditional image generators treat a photo like a checkerboard. Start at the top left pixel, move right, bounce down a line, repeat. That's fine for simple doodles, but it means even a modest 1024 by 1024 piece, roughly Instagram's full size, post forces the network to spit out more than 10,000 little word-like pieces called tokens. Infinity, one of last year's buzzier models, needs that many. It's like reading a document one character at a time just to render an image. Painfully slow and inefficient. Even so-called clever tricks like VAR and FlexVAR, which zoom the canvas in and out as they go, still burn through 680 tokens just for a 256 by 256 square. If you're aiming for real-time graphics inside a game lobby or a video call avatar, that's a slog. Detail Flow asks, why not write the picture the way humans sketch, big shapes first, eyelashes later? So the team builds a tokenizer that starts with blurry, low resolution versions of each training image and then sharpens step by step. Each token in the sequence equals one notch of extra clarity. And because everything flows in a single row, one dimensional instead of grid based, the model only needs 128 tokens to deliver a 256 by 256 sample. Measured on ImageNet, that earns a GFID of 2.96. In the weird world of FID scores, lower means the fake looks more like the real photo set. So beating VARS 3.3 while using less than one fifth the tokens is a genuine mic drop. Dial the target resolution up and let detail flow run to 512 tokens and it hits 2.62. FlexVARS 3.05 suddenly looks pretty middle of the pack. Speed matters just as much, and here's where the course to fine ordering pays off. Because the first chunks carry coarse layout, and later chunks handle fluff like hair strands or tree bark, the network can predict several tokens at once. That sort of parallel decoding usually leaves visual potholes, random blotches where guesses clash. But ByteDance bakes in a self-repair drill. During training, they deliberately scramble a few early tokens, then force later ones to notice the glitch and patch it in an ablation pass where they disabled that self-repair. The GFID jumped from a comfortable 3.68 to a fuzzy 4.11, proving the patch-up routine isn't just cosmetic. Combine fewer tokens with those parallel burps of computation, and Detail Flow delivers frames almost twice as fast as VAR or FlexVAR on the same graphics processor. If you've ever waited for HD upscale progress bar to crawl across the screen, chopping that dead time in half means more time tweaking color palettes and less time staring at spinning circles. Another neat bit is the one-dimensional latent space. Because each token is literally next level of detail, you can stop generation early, preview a lo-fi version, decide you hate the composition, and throw it away before wasting compute on eyelashes. That's huge for interactive design. Plus it sidesteps the failure mode in FlexTalk, where scaling up the token count boosted GFID from 1.9 to 2.5, not what you want. Detail Flow's score keeps dropping. The good direction, as you add tokens, showing the hierarchy stays tidy. Okay, put your paintbrush down and swap it for a library card because story number two is all about words, or more accurately, vectors that represent words and sentences. But real quick, if you've been following all this AI news and thinking, okay, this is cool, but what can I actually do with it? You're definitely not alone. That's why we created the AI Income Blueprint. It shows you seven ways regular people are using AI to build extra income streams on the side. No tech skills needed, and you can automate everything pretty easily. The guide contains simple, proven methods using tools I often talk about on this channel. Download it free by clicking the link in the description. All right, let's get into what Alibaba just released. Alibaba's 
Quen Group went public on June 5th with the Quen 3 embedding and Quen 3 re-ranker family. If you've ever typed a half-remembered lyric into a music app or searched Slack for that doc someone shared last month, embeddings are the reason the right answer pops up instead of a random meme from 2017. The catch is that the best embeddings used to hide behind expensive APIs. Quen 3 blows the doors off that paywall, Apache 2.0 license, downloadable checkpoints on Hugging Face, GitHub, and Model Scope, plus cloud endpoints if you're a point and click fan. There are three size tiers, a slim 0.6 billion parameter model for laptops or edge boxes, a middleweight 4 billion, and a full power 8 billion for servers. All three handle 119 languages straight out of the box. You got French, Marathi, Yoruba, PHP snippets, the works. Benchmarks back that up. On MMTEB, which bundles 216 tasks across 250 plus languages, the 8 billion variant racks up 70.58, nudging past Google's Gemini embeddings and dethroning the old GTE QN2 line. Over on the English-only MTEB version 2 board, it clocks 75.22, slipping ahead of NV Embed version 2 and Grit LM7B. Developers love the MTEB code test because it simulates hunting GitHub snippets. Quen 3 embedding 8 billion nails 80.68. If you maintain a code search feature, that's money. How they pull it off is half training data, half clever architecture. Instead of averaging the whole hidden state soup like most open embeddings, Quen3 grabs just the hidden vector behind the end of sentence token. It's like picking the anchor point of a sentence instead of crunching every syllable equally. They also inject instructions right into the prompt, find similar reviews, followed by the text, then a special end token. That single format switch means one model can flip from classifying sentiment to ranking legal paragraphs without adding extra heads or adapters. The re-ranker sibling uses binary labels for relevance and computes scores with a token likelihood trick, so it piggybacks on the same transformer muscle with minimal overhead. The training pipeline is a three-step relay race. First, large-scale weak supervision. 150 million synthetic query document pairs created by their heavyweight Quinn 332 billion backbone. Think machine-generated flashcards covering retrieval, classification, sentence similarity, and bilingual alignment. Second, they cherry-pick 12 million of those pairs that score above 0.7 on cosine similarity and polish the model with supervised fine-tuning. Third, they melt together several checkpoints using spherical linear interpolation slurp, so the final weights sit in a sweet spot instead of hugging one weird subtask. Drop any stage and MMTEB scores slump by up to six points. Even the dinky 0.6 billion re-ranker outpaces respected baselines like Jinnah and BGE, while the 8 billion re-ranker posts 81.22 on MTEB code and 72.94 on MMTEBR, which is top shelf. Because the whole stack is Apache 2.0, you can self-host, tweak, fine-tune, sell a product on top, it's yours. The press blurb even tossed a CU at AI Infrastructure Minicon on August 2nd, so if you bolt Quen3 into a new RAG pipeline, you might end up on their speaker list. Now let's tackle the third item, getting chatbots to admit when they don't know the answer. Everybody loves reinforcement fine-tuning, RFT for short, because it nudges large language models toward coherent, structured prose. You feed the bot tons of question and answer pairs, score it on logic and style, shower it with reward points when it nails a response, and your advice column style assistant feels more polished except the process silently punishes any answer that says, hmm, not enough info. Refusals don't get positive points, so as you crank up RFT, the model loses its instinct to back off. Researchers at the University of Southern California call the result the hallucination tax, and the numbers prove it. Multiple public models see their refusal rate drop near zero once RFT is finished, so they start filling gaps with confident nonsense, dangerous in finance, healthcare, or pretty much anything. University of Southern California's FIX is the Synthetic Unanswerable Math Dataset, or SUM. They start with deep scalars regular math problems, then feed each one to an O3 mini generator that messes with at least one key element. 
removing a side length in a geometry problem, swapping dollars for euros halfway through the text, or inserting a flat contradiction. 10% of the training set ends up impossible, but still looks plausible to human eyes. The prompt now instructs the model to output, I don't know, or a similar refusal whenever it detects not enough info. Crucially, answerable and unanswerable problems are mixed in the same batches, so the model has to pause and reason before choosing a path. The payoff is massive. Quen 2.57 billion starts with a near zero refusal rate, 0.01, on some. After folding in that 10% unanswerable slice during RFT, it leaps to 0.73 refusal on some itself and 0.81 on UMWP, a separate unanswerable benchmark. On the self-aware dataset, which tests more general uncertainty, it jumps to 0.94. Llama 3.18 billion instructs sees a similar pattern, rocketing from 0.00 to 0.75 on SUM and 0.79 on UMWPE. Accuracy on serious math sets, GSM 8K and Math 500, changes by less than 500s basically statistical noise. That means the model learns caution without turning clueless. Another bonus, the paper notes an uptick in inference time reasoning. Because the model knows it might have to refuse, it proactively checks the math steps instead of blurting the first plausible line. Add a governance wrapper like the alignment framework Parlant, which keeps control tokens separate from the text users see, and you can trim hallucinations even further without bloating compute. Mm. What I like here is the minimal overhead. You're sprinkling in a tenth more training data, no architecture surgery, no extra graphics processors. It's the training data equivalent of putting a rear view mirror sticker that says, objects may be wrong, double check. Makes you wonder why refusal tokens weren't part of every fine tune from the start. Look, most people still think AI is some distant future, but regular folks are already using it to build income streams quietly behind the scenes. If you want to see how they're doing it without tech skills or quitting their job, download the AI Income Blueprint. It's totally free, the link's in the description, but it won't stay free forever. So yeah, that's the rundown. If you stuck around through the rainstorm, thanks a ton. Toss a like if you learned something new. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next upload.